Every year around about June, we pile a bunch of middle school kids into uh, some white, a big white van here and uh, start our journey to confirmation camp. When we get to camp, they will uh, live in community together. They will eat together, have fun together, climb mountains together, uh, learn together, worship together, and do all kinds of stuff when we get there. Now, uh, our first part of our journey, we leave here, we go to St. Stephen out in Longwood where we uh, rendezvous with the people from St. Stephen and the people from Spirit of Joy, and then our caravan heads out from there. Now, inevitably, between here and St. Stephen, we haven't even gotten the first leg done, one of the kids in the van will ask what question? Are we there yet? Now, they are old enough to full well know that we have two days of driving, 12 hours across the, we got a long way. So they say it in a joking way. But all of you that have had little ones know that when you take a little kid somewhere, they have no sense of space and time. And so when you could be driving two days, you can drive 20 minutes, it does not matter because that uncertainty leaves them with sort of a gap of understanding, right? There's a gap between where they are and where they're going and they don't know how big it is. And so they ask that question, are we there yet? There's a, uh, if you've ever been to London, there's a subway thing uh, about uh, the distance between the platform and the train. And do you know what it says? Mind the gap, right? So little kids are trying to figure out how we're minding the gap, and they ask this question, are we there yet? I once I had, uh, I was behind the pulpit, I was getting ready for worship, I was sorting through some papers, and a woman came up and said to me, do you do funerals? Now that may seem like a weird question, but I hadn't graduated seminary yet, and the church that uh, I was at didn't have a pastor. And a lot of you don't realize that anybody can do a funeral. There's nothing like official about uh, what we do for that. But I had done a few, so I just said to her, yes. And she said, well, this one would be complicated. And I said, well, what, what would make it complicated? And she said, well, my dad is dying, and he's a jerk. Now, she didn't use the word jerk. Let's clean it up a little bit, or clean it up a lot. <laughs> But she went on to talk about how her dad had not been present for them as a father and uh, all kinds of other terrible stuff. And I was thinking, okay, well, that's not that complicated, right? There are people in our lives that are hard to love, and, you know, everybody's got somebody like that. And then she said, the problem is his drinking buddies think he's great. And she knew they would be at the funeral. She was trying to figure out how you hold together these two things, a family that didn't think he was great and drinking buddies that didn't think he was great. And how do you remember which is what we do when someone dies, right? We remember. And I think sitting underneath that, though, was maybe a little bit of a deeper question. And it was a question of destination. It was the question of the kingdom of God and how far off is the kingdom of God. And from her perspective, she could look at the life of her dad and think that the gap between him and the kingdom of God was pretty big. And wondering if it was maybe too big. And trying to sort through some of that. Jesus... Uh, is having a, a pretty healthy, uh, lively conversation with some people, and a scribe comes along and says, uh, is interested, it looks like Jesus knows some stuff, so he says, hey, what is the first commandment? And Jesus says, well, and he's quoting scripture here, he says, uh, the Lord our God is one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And these are commandments, uh, which mean they are about how we are supposed to live, but as we go through the world as people, do we judge other people sometimes? Yes. Do we judge ourselves sometimes? Yes. Yes, and we have to judge against something, right? It's a measure. Uh, one of the ways we can think about the law of God is that it's like a mirror that reflects back to us how we're doing. And so if you think about uh, these commandments in that way, when that woman came and asked me this question about the funeral, I don't think she was explicitly thinking about these words of Jesus, right? But uh, we talk about the golden rule. What's the golden rule? Right? Treat other people like you want to be treated. We carry that with us all the time as well. And so anytime we're looking at other people's behavior, we have something there that we're measuring. And she could well have sat down with this text and said, gosh, my dad sure did not give his heart to Jesus. He gave it to drinking, but not to Jesus. And then she could say, did he give his whole soul, his whole being to God and say, no, he really didn't get that done either. And did he give his mind to prayer and scripture and no, he didn't do that. And did he give his strength to serving people and no. And she could have thought, gosh, he fell really short. And then she could turn and say, well, how did he do it loving his neighbor? And neighbor broadly defined, right, as his family, they could say, well, he sure wasn't great at that. 
But if you turn around and ask the drinking buddies and said, how did he do? And they, they might not have a good answer for the God part of that thing. But at least they might be able to say, well, he's a good friend, right? He showed up when I needed him to show up. That's what's made this whole thing complicated for us. But when we look back and remember the people in our lives, there are things we remember that are hard, and there are things that we remember aren't, but we have some kind of measure. And we can take these commandments then and measure our own lives uh, in the present. Uh, sometimes uh, there's an activity people will do, ask to write their own obituary. If you had to write your own obituary, how would you figure out how to write that? And as uh, you know, when people die, we try to remember were they faithful and were they a good person? And all of that grows out of the same space of trying to understand how close the kingdom of God is. So if we think about our own lives today, um, have you, have we all given our whole hearts to God or do we trust some other stuff sometimes? Probably trust some other stuff, right? Do we give the whole of our being to God or is our being in some other places? Other places. Um, do we dedicate our, our minds to reading scripture and prayer and thinking godly thoughts and using godly words in all of our interactions? No. Do we um, give all of our strength to things that are pleasing to God? No. So on the first one, we're not doing so great. Uh, how are we doing at loving our neighbor? Fair maybe, right? Sometimes we do really well. Uh, sometimes it depends who that neighbor is. Uh, if we remember, like when you think about this woman, remember her dad, right? From her perspective, he did a terrible job. But from the other perspective, maybe better. And so we can land in these places where even in our own lives, we can find ourselves going, yeah, we're not really living up to this. Which can then get us to the question of how far off is the kingdom of God? Now, if you keep reading in this story, uh, I always expect if, if most of the scripture readings, when we hear Jesus is interacting with a Pharisee or a scribe or somebody, they're trying to trick him. They're trying to catch him in something. So he asks Jesus, what's the first commandment? Jesus answers. And then the scribe doesn't say something tricky. He says, good answer. That's right, Jesus. God is one. And he kind of paraphrases a little bit and says it's about giving God all that we are and then also loving our neighbor as ourselves. And then what does Jesus say to him? You are not far from the kingdom of God. Now this, uh, I heard this. Sometimes we hear scripture how we want to hear it. So early in the week, uh, when I heard this text, I said, oh, the kingdom of God is near. Because in the early parts of the Gospels, when Jesus is walking around saying repent, he always says the kingdom of God is near, which means it's like right by us, right? And um, so I read that, and then uh, it turned to Cole pointed out to me that uh, it doesn't say near, it says not far off, which is a little bit different. <coughs> So then I started to wonder about this text and say, what does that mean? Well, here is a guy who's talking about loving your neighbor and talking about loving God and recognizing that that is the main thing, not rituals and other things, which can be helpful, but the main thing is that we live with the love of God and neighbor. And just in talking about that and understanding that that's the main thing, Jesus says to him, good for you, the kingdom of God is not far off. So what is it that would make the kingdom of God then near? Talking about love and thinking it's a good idea and knowing it's the right answer is not far off. Actually doing it is probably where the kingdom of God comes near and among us, right? And so in this little stretch of text, Jesus is looking at this guy and saying, you've got, you've got it, right? You understand it's not far off. Now just go and do it, right? Live in that space of love and the kingdom will be alive. I didn't actually do the funeral that the woman asked me if I could do. Uh, he died and um, somebody else uh, was invited to do that. But I did do a funeral for another person later who had basically lived a very similar story. And it was a family that I did not know and when I showed up uh, to the funeral, uh, it had been, he had wreaked havoc in the life of his family. Drugs, alcohol, there were two different groups of people at the funeral. There was his family that he had kind of left behind. And then there was his other group of people that had shared all of this toxicity with him. And for the first part of the service where we were doing eulogies and everything else, you would have thought that we were having a service for Mother Teresa. <laughs> nowhere, nowhere was there any mention of the just disaster that this family was because of what the dad had done. Nothing. It was all just these wonderful, tender stories. And I was sitting there thinking, should we be talking about this brokenness a little bit? Because I think honest accounting of life is, is kind of helpful. And, uh, but they weren't. 
And so I stood up for my part and, and read some scripture and said, you know, sometimes it feels like you're drowning. And then there was this big exhale of, yes, right, that's probably how he felt. But that was kind of the extent of it. And for all of these years in between that and reading this text this week, I've had this kind of idea that, you know, sometimes we want to deny the tough stuff and we want to avoid the tough stuff and we just want to dwell on the good stuff. And then I read this story. And I heard Jesus say to this guy that, you know what, when love of God is there and love of neighbor, then that's when the kingdom's not far off. And then maybe if when we're actually doing it, that's when the kingdom of God is near. And I started to think about all of the funerals I've done. What kind of stories do we tell people? Happy ones, good ones, right? Does that mean, like in that particular case, did they, they couldn't ignore the brokenness. It was just part of every day, right? They couldn't get past it. It was around them all the time. But what they were remembering were the times when Dad had actually got it together enough to love them really well. They were remembering the times when maybe God was working through Dad to bring some love into their life. Which means they were remembering the time when the kingdom of God was what? Near. It wasn't not far off. It was near, right? Talking about it's not far off, but making it happen is near. And so then you start to think about when we remember the saints and we remember the loved ones and we tell those stories. Probably what we're remembering are those times when love was alive. When God was working through people in our lives to touch us and inspire us and to shape us and grow us. And then you start to say, gosh, that's what the kingdom looks like. It's not far off. It's right here all the time. Now we have enough heartbreak in our world, really all around us, to make it seem like it's far off. I had that conversation at least twice this week with people who were wondering where God is in all of this world that we live in. So that gap can seem enormous, right? But what Jesus is telling us is no, when we understand that love is the thing, it's not far off, but when we experience it, it's right there. So today as we remember saints and you remember those times of love, know that that was the kingdom of God right there with you. But also then the amazing thing is that the world still goes on, the world has heartbreak and the kingdom of God can seem far off, and who did God send to close the gap? Jesus, who, when he came into the world as a human, started to close the gap. On the cross, he meets us in all of the bad stuff that we have come up with as human beings. And he meets us right in the darkest places and closes the gap even more. And in the resurrection, what Jesus does is drag all, everybody up to God. That's what he does. So Jesus has eliminated the gap altogether. And we now live in this place where that is gone. It doesn't always feel like it. So if Jesus is the one that closed the gap, whose job is it to point that out? Ours, right? So when you remember those saints, and you remember those times that they loved well, and loved God well, and that touched you, that's the kingdom of life. Well, guess what? Jesus chose us to go bring that alive for other people. And that's an amazing gift that we have been given. It doesn't always feel like a gift, but to go out and love the world, and when we do that well, then people will know the kingdom of God through us. Not because we're so good at it. A little bit ago, we just made a comment of how bad we are at it. But because Jesus is good at it and working through us. Even the guy whose daughter didn't, couldn't get her mind around how we're going to talk about that. One of those drinking Bibles, probably probably stood up and said, you know what, he saved my life. There was a time when he showed up. I mean, you never know how it is that God works through us to touch the lives of other people. So we're the ones sent out in the world to bring the kingdom alive. Which brings me back to getting in the van with all these confirmation kids. Uh, one of them says, are we there yet? And uh, the destination might have seemed uh, pretty far off just then. But before we even got to Long Island this year, I had heard, we weren't even the I hope. <laughs> and I had heard uh, a full a cappella in parts rendition of the beginning of the Hamilton soundtrack. <laughs> They were still singing it when we got to St. Stephen. It was amazing. And what I realized then was that the destination wasn't North Carolina, right? We were already there. And we always remember that God is with us, that the kingdom is not for office right here, and we're the ones that Jesus brings it alive in every day. Amen.